I'm out mowing, mowing some nice second cutting early this morning. It's, it's quite nice. It's pretty wet out here this morning, but we'll see what we can do. I plugged up here just now, but I think it'll go fine. Um, and then I'm hoping to maybe go to the woods and uh, grab a couple um, poles so I can fix the shafts up for my, so I can use one horse again. So I am hoping to maybe show you that today. So we'll see how the day goes though. Yesterday I mowed a bunch of hay over there. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, that should be bailed up hopefully tomorrow. We'll get this one when this dry. Today I ended up using Buck and Bill. Okay, I mowed everything I wanted to mow this morning and now I'm wanting to work on my shafts. If you remember a few weeks ago, I had showed you a video of Ted and Hay with Bill um, and I had these shafts that I used on the cart, the motorized cart, and we tedded hay. And then we almost got done with the field and I actually broke one of the, one of the shafts here. So I am going to go get a new one, but let's ex try to explain a few things on these first. I don't use a single horse that terribly much, but sometimes it's really nice to be have that have that available. So I want to get this fixed back up again so that I can. And I might even in the near future here actually hitch onto the rake and rake hay with one horse instead of two. So these are the shafts. Some people call them fills. And there's probably other names from also. As you can see, this side here is broken. Um, this is, I can't remember who did it, but somebody made this, this steel end part up for me. And almost all the carts I have are set up with a pipe. And so this set of shafts has this piece of wood right here. So I actually can just slide it into that pipe to hold it in place. And then the the evener or the whipper tree is actually hitched to the cart itself and so because of that it's all held together tightly so that this can't pull out this where this goes is also where the pole or the tongue would go i kind of wish that the end steel part was a little bit wider down there for some of my bigger horses like ken for example but i've used ken in these shafts before and and it works fine so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do it just the way it is. And, but I wanna replace these wooden poles that are hitched to it. I chose, when I made this quite a few years ago, to use these hard hack poles. That's what this, the kind of wood is. It's called hard hack. And it's a very, very tough wood. And I just kind of threw it together quick like, but it's worked for quite a few years now. And I have decided I'm just gonna do the same. I could take the time and saw out some some uh, square stock and kind of round my corners. But these these hard hack poles work quite well as long as I get nice straight ones and the right diameter ones. So we'll go up into the woods now and I'm gonna measure this, see how long these are. And I'm gonna make them just a little bit longer. I'm also gonna go back to the video that I used with Bill and see where, the, where they were placed, how long they were on his body and I think they were good, good length, but if, it, if I cut them a little bit long, I can always cut them off. So that's a lot easier than trying to glue them back on. So we will get these measured up and we will head to the woods and go pick up a couple of these. Okay, I'm up in the woods now. Uh, as you can see, we have the trail hitched onto the truck still because I was actually planning on logging this morning. And then the weather had a slight change, so I decided to cut a little bit more hay down. So that's why I did the, the mowing this morning. And I hope to go logging tomorrow afternoon, so that's why I want to keep the trailer hitched. So when I go on any log job, I'm always looking out for hardhack trees. At any point, my pole on my cart could break, and then I would need to replace the pole. And so I'm always looking to see if I have a supply of hardhack trees in the woodlot so that I can do that. This here is my own land, and so I've known over the years where some of the batches of um, hardhack is and here's one of them right here. Um, hardhack is a just such a great wood. It's also called by numerous different names. So I do call it hardhack, but there's oh I can't even think of all the names. Maybe if I can think of them, I'll write them down on the screen even because there there's a lot of different names for it. So this is the type of wood I'm talking about right here. This is a very small one and fairly straight one here, and this is going to someday make a nice pole for 
my horses. It's a slow growing tree though, so it does take a long time to grow and it doesn't grow very large. These are actually quite large ones, these here. Now these I could use if I took them down and put them on my sawmill, but they have to be straight. Now this one here is fairly good. Um, this one here is probably too crooked for anything I wanna use. Now, if I have to, even for my shafts, I could cut a piece on the sawmill to make it the right size. But I was hoping to just find a couple round ones. So I'm gonna look around and see what we can find. A lot of these right through here are getting almost too big for anything without cutting them a little bit. And also when, when I'm looking for for a tongue or a pole for my cart, I'm also looking for a notch or a limb at the top where my neck yoke would be held. And that's very important because I don't always have a way to drill a hole and put a bolt in to, to hold the neck yoke. I like to just use a, a limb. I think there's gonna be a change of plans here. Because I'm seeing a lot of these trees are getting actually too big for my regular tongues on a, on a wagon or on my logging cart, um, I think I'm gonna take one of these good size ones like this one right here and that one's plenty of long, long enough all I need is 10 feet and I'm going to take that and put it on my sawmill and square it up and it'll make a nice shafts so that's what we'll do we'll cut it and put it in the trailer There's a horse when you need one. That's not very big, but boy, that's heavy. Hopefully I can shave it down so it won't be too heavy for the horse on the uh, shafts, and I'm sure it can. So let's take it home and see what we can do. So my idea was to make two, both the cans out of this one log, and I thought I could get a six by six with very little bark showing, but it turns out it did have quite a lot of bark showing at a six by six, and I was gonna cut it in half down to three by three. And so I figured I could get the, it actually potentially have been four of them, but I knew I wouldn't be able to quite get that because of the bark, so I thought I could get at least two good ones. And I ended up with one fairly good one, and the other one wasn't too good. But I think it's going to work just the same. So I squared it up into six by six, and then I cut it in half so I had two three by sixes. And then now I'm just cutting it down to a three by three. And then we'll see if that's going to work for us. There's still a little bark showing on them, but that's okay. I was hoping to get this job done today and get these shafts all made, but as things happen, the hay was ready to bale, had to go do that, this, that, and the other thing, of course, always takes place, so we never got it done today. So we we'll just have to get on to our things that we need to do and do it another day. Good morning, everybody. Well, this video, I started about three days ago. I guess it's just uh, with everything going on, it just seems sometimes like it, it just takes forever to do some things. Uh, we've had a fairly good stretch here, but uh, we've had some problems and, and so it's taken us a while to get this done. But anyways, 
Um, we've, we're loaded up, ready to go landing, um, and I have a problem even right now. I have a flat tire. Fortunately, with these tandems, I think I can get out to landing all right. My camera is out of the truck, so I can't even take a video of this. All I have is my phone, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't get the landing just the same. And I have Buck and Bill again today. I'm actually thinking about going to a horse pole with these two in a little bit. And uh, uh, I know some of the my viewers don't really like watching horse poles, and that's fine. Uh, don't feel that you have to. I mean, I will have a just tiny percentage of horse poles. Most everything is going to be farming and logging. So we'll head this out to landing. Okay, we made it out. As you can see, the tire's still with us. Luckily, I had a good one at the front, but we'll have to unload this load and take that off. So I'm finally back at it, getting these shafts fixed. I ended up taking the I ended up taking the wood back into the mill and sawing it down to two and a half by two and a half. The three inches was too big, and so they fit in there better. And I bolted them on, and now I'm just putting on the whole back um, chains. I took the measurements off the old shafts to make sure I had it right, and these shafts I think are. 10 feet long but they're too long and I've got them marked where the old ones were and so I will end up cutting them off at the right length. Although I may hitch them up to the horses and just make sure I'm accurate as far as the lengths. These holdback straps will go into hitch into the ring of the britchin and that will hold them back when you're going down a hill and also help you when you stop. Okay, we got them all done. We're pretty well. I think I've got a, I got it marked here. I'm going to cut off the end of these and get a draw shave and do a little rounding my corners off so it won't be hard on the horse. And then it's all done. So we'll be able to hitch up one of the horses single and do some more work with a single horse. Maybe that will be in an upcoming video very soon. So. Anyways, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.